Hello everyone and welcome to this, another episode of 2D Prototyping in Unity. My name is Kasanas. In the last episode, we did a number of things, actually. We did a fair number of things. It was a longer episode. What we did is we created our first project, and that project is going to hold all the information we need to create our game. We went through and we built ourselves a number of a number of folders, and we built ourselves a uh, a number. We, we imported a number of sprites in order to be able to build the game itself. Some of you guys might have seen this, and I should I should talk about it right now. There's something in here called main right now that is called a scene. When I closed this episode down last time, and I closed down Unity, it asked me if I wanted to save the scene, and the answer was yes. So hopefully you guys did that because <laughs> I didn't mention it in that last episode, and that's because I'm really rather rusty after being off for almost uh, almost a year. Anyway, when you close off the when you when you either shut down Unity or you you start a new project or whatever you're going to do, it's going to ask you if you want to save your current one. And of course you do. You can give it any name. I just simply called it main. It's going to be my, my game screen. It doesn't really matter what you call it, but it's going to be my, my main game screen. So I called it main. So this is the scene now that I'll be working with from this point forward. Okay? Anyway, so in the last episode, we, we imported our sprites. We discussed sprites and some of the information within here. And we went through and we built our background and our midground objects. We can see them right here. The background is obviously in the back, and the midground is obviously part way backwards. We also discussed the main camera, and, and we didn't touch too much on this. Uh, if you guys are having a hard time seeing some of your stuff, you can reduce the near and the far, or, or increase the far clipping planes, and that will allow you to see uh, more information around your camera if you're having a, hard, uh, a problem with that. Um, what we did discuss, however, is the projection type, and we had two options, the orthographic and the perspective. Now, typically, when you open up a 2D scene, it opens it up as an orthographic camera, meaning that there's no depth in anything uh, on the scene itself. The entire scene is flat. We went with perspective and we did that to ensure that we were going to have parallax as you can see right down there in the game view. We're getting free parallax simply by changing it to perspective camera and that's going to affect certain things that we do in the near future. In today's episode, we're going to go on and build the foreground, or the platforms that the character is going to run across to be able to traverse the, the scene and to traverse the, the map. So we're going to build those platforms, and it's really not difficult to do. There actually is a number of things, and we'll go on and we'll continue to build these platforms and make some changes as we add things to our character uh, in the future, but for now we're going to build ourselves a very simplistic platform. If you go into, as long as you did everything that I did, and you go into your sprites uh, folder, you're going to see something called simple ground. And there's a couple there. There's there's black, there's bridge black, uh, medium ground, and simple ground. I'm just going to take and I'm going to drag this simple ground into uh, my uh, direct into my hierarchy view right here. And by doing so, it ended up at the origin, which is where I want it. I'm going to build everything at the origin to make sure everything's working the way I want it to. Okay, so I dragged it into here. If you didn't and you dragged it up into the scene view, you can always go to the transform itself, the transform node, and you can you can click on the gear and you can say reset and it'll automatically set your transform to zero. Uh, your position, your rotation, your scales to one, obviously. So by dragging this sprite into our scene, just like last week, we ended up with a number of different nodes. We ended up with a transform node allowing us to move this object about our scene. Uh, it gives us positional and scaling ro uh, run rotation uh, information in order for us to be able to manipulate this object. We also have our sprite renderer, and our sprite renderer is going to allow us to um, allow us to render this object itself. It renders the sprite. Whatever sprite is located here, in this case simple ground, so it's a reference to the simple ground, whatever sprite is referenced here, it's going to render that sprite. We also talked about the sorting layer very briefly and the importance of the order in the layer. So, uh, for now I'm going to put this into a, let's put it at negative one. Uh, so, if you remember correctly, our background was located at minus 10 in, this, in, the, in the order of the layer. Uh, the midground was located at minus 9, and this is going to be lo uh, located at minus 1, which means this platform now is going to be rendered on top of everything else in the scene. Platform, midground, background will all be rendered in that order, with the mid, with the back, with the mid, sorry, with the foreground being on top. So the first thing I'm going to do, change the name. Let's call this long platform. As I mentioned before, we've got ourselves a couple of different options here. We have ourselves the simple ground, which is our longest platform, our medium ground, uh, and our bridge black, which all can be used to make different platforms. Anyway, moving on. What we want to do, in order for our character to be able to, or anything for that matter, to be able to, to 
interact with another object. An object in Unity must have a collider in order for the 2D physics, sorry, a 2D collider, in order for the 2D physics engine to be able to say, yes, this is an object that should be interacted with. Okay. Um, so basically what we want to do is we want to add a, a physics component to this object in, in order to allow it to be interacted with. And when I say interacted, it means the character can stand on it. That's what, I, that's what my goal is, to make a platform that the character can stand on. Okay. In order to add a component to this object, in order to add a component to the long platform, there's a number of different ways, but the most, the easiest way to do so is to say add component. Click. In doing so, you can see a drop-down menu appears, and you can type in into the search engine there if you are looking for something particular and you can't find it. You can type into the search engine and it'll find it for you. In our case, we're looking for a physics 2D option, so I'm going to go down there and click. Now you can see there's a number of things in here. Rigid body at the top, we're going to take a look at that uh, in a little later lesson. But for now, we're going to take a look at the colliders. There's a circle collider, a box collider, an edge collider, and a polygon collider. Each of these objects allows the, allows the asset you're building to, to be interacted with by other objects with colliders. So, in this situation, I could add either an edge a polygon or a box collider and be able to surround this thing fairly neatly. I'm going to use a box collider and the reason why I did that is because it allows interaction with the sides of this as well as the top. In many platformers or in a case where you don't want your character to be able to interact with the side for example, you could have used an edge and it would have just allowed just along the edge here, just along the top of the, the platform itself to be interacted with. In our case however I want to use a box collider so I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see it. Adding the collider creates this green box. I'm going to adjust slightly. I want my character, when he, when he steps on here, I want him to sink down a little bit. I want him to sink down to about this black level right here. And I want him to be able to, if he hits the side, I want him to fall off. So if he misses the, this top part, I want him to, be able to fall off. So I'm going to use the offset. As you can see here, we've got ourselves a brand new component called the Box Collider 2D. Um, it has a number of things associated with it. A physics material, which we're going to talk about in a little bit later date. Uh, the option as a as a, a, a checkbox to either make it a trigger or to be used by a vector, and we're going to talk about both of those things at a later date as well. But for now, I'm just going to use this offset and this size to make sure this box fits the way I want it to. So I think I'm going to shrink this down to, let's try it at 12, uh, a little bit smaller, let's try it at 11.8. That looks good. So basically what I wanted to happen is I want our character, if he tries to jump on top, if he misses this top platform, he's going to hit the side and fall off. So that's what I wanted to happen. That's great. I'm also going to adjust the height a little tiny bit. Actually, I'll adjust the size a little bit first. Let's make this into 1.5, make it a little bit smaller. Maybe a little bit smaller than that, 1.3. And what I want is when the character sits on top of this, this is probably in a perfect location right here, when the character sits on top of it, I want his feet to come down a little tiny bit. So let's adjust this a little bit more. I'm going to move this down by uh, minus 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.05, 0 0.05. All right, there we go. Now this collider is sitting in such a way when the character is placed on top of it, the collider should allow his feet to sink in if I've designed my character correctly. Okay. This is all we really have to do to create the platform. This is our first platform right here. We're going to be using a number of these things. We're going to be using a number of them throughout our design. So I want to make sure that I can save this as a something that I can use over and over and over again. Now that brings us to a concept called prefab. A prefab. Now a prefab is something that you've previously fabricated and you can use by simply dragging it back onto the screen. The prefabs will actually then allow you to manipulate individual objects, so individual instances of the prefab uh, to make slightly, something slightly different, or allow you to change all the prefabs at the same time. We're going to take a closer look at prefabs a little bit later on, but we're going to build our first one right now. It's very, very simple to do. I've already created a prefab uh, directory right here. You don't, have to, you don't have to call it prefab. You can call it anything you want, as long as you drag this object from the scene itself into a directory like that. So I simply grabbed it, I dragged it, and I dropped it. When I did, it 
automatically appeared here as long platform. It's got all the same information as I did before over here. Um, I put it in the prefab just so I always know where all my prefabs are. But you could have called that anything you wanted. You could have called it ground and just simply added all your ground layers to that. As long as you take the object from the hierarchy and drag it and drop it into the uh, project view over here into one of the folders, you will have created a prefab. You can see and I hopefully you can see this in the video, I'm not sure if you can. You can see that the main camera, background, and mid-ground are all black. They're shaded black, whereas long platform is shaded blue. That blue shade indicates that it's a, uh, it's a prefab. Now, the awesome thing about prefabs, watch this. I now, let's go back here, I can at any time just get rid of this now. I can delete it. It's gone from my scene. And what I can do is I can go back and I can start to add as many of these as I want to. I'm going to add one there, it's called long platform. I'm going to add a second one right here. Let's drag it over a bit and there we go. I have got two long platforms inside of inside of my game. That's how easy it is to create these platforms. They're not in the right space. I don't really like them where they are. I'm going to, oops, I'm going to select them from here and I'm going to move them down. Uh, ultimately, we're going to move the camera, so uh, I'm not going to worry too much about this right now. But you'd want it maybe something like that. You can see right there that I've got myself in the game view. I've got myself, uh, I've got myself my stuff set up. And I can move up the background, for example, way up as high as I want. Let's say I want it like that, and I can move up my mid ground as well, just so I kind of get the the view I want. This is showing me what my game is going to look like. That is how you create the the object is the. The, uh, the platforms themselves. Very simple. You can go through and you can rename these. It's not going to affect it. I can now call this uh, long plat A. You know, whatever I want, I can call it whatever I want. I can also make changes. You can see if I take a look at, if I click on this guy right here, if I take a look at the prefab itself, my transform position is at 0, 0, 0. But if I take a look at long plat A, the transform position has been changed to 7.57, negative 5.21. What that is doing, and you see, you see how it's dark and it's bold, what that's doing is saying it is overriding some of the values that we've created for our prefab. So you can override the values of your prefab if you want to. I can go through and I can change this thing here so that this is much larger. Let's say I make this into two, and I make this thing here only uh, three long. So I've now changed my collider, so if the character jumped anywhere on here, he would miss the collider. But you can see I've changed this one. This one here, long plat A, has been changed, whereas long platform, uh, the original long platform, has not been. And any other long platform that I drag in is not going to be changed either. You can see that my collider is still the same. All right? So that is how a prefab works. It's a very, very powerful tool that allows you to very quickly add things to your scene over and over and over again. It's ideal for things like this platform. Ideal. All right, one more thing we're going to take a look at really quickly. Uh, I'm going to add one more foreground element, and it's just a review of last, uh, last episode where we created ourselves an asset that had nothing other than the transform and the sprite renderer. What I am going to do is I'm going to go back to my sprites. I'm going to find my rocket right here, and I'm going to drag it and drop it onto the scene. Uh, this is going to be my character's rocket, and this character is, he's not in here yet, so I don't really have a frame of reference, but I'm going to scale this up to, let's say, uh, four and four. Let's see if that's any good. Four and four, and that is going to be my rocket ship sitting on in the foreground right there. That's going to be my character's starting location. He came out of that rocket and he flew away. The rocket itself simply dragged and dropped on. Dropped on. I'm going to add it to the, let's add it to the minus seven, so it's actually going to be rendered in front of the midground, but behind the foreground. Uh, I'm going to put it at minus seven, and I'm not going to do anything else to it. As you can see, once again, I've created myself the rocket. The rocket's there. It's simply decoration. And I did so now, so we can see, if I go back to my main camera, and we move everything around here, we can see we've got really, really nice movement in the background, the foreground, and the midground. Everything is moving as we expect it to. All right, and I put the rocket in place just to kind of say this is where your character starts. 
Okay, everyone, I hope that was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. It's very, very easy to do. I'd like you guys to take a few minutes and build yourselves a couple platforms of your own. Go in and build additional platforms. Build yourself a black bridge and build yourself a... Uh, a, mid, a medium ground platform. Build them both so that you can add them to the scene. Make yourself a couple of prefabs and then you've got yourself the ability right there to be able to start adding the entire, um, the entire layout of your game into place. Alright everybody, I hope you enjoyed that episode. I hope it was informative for you. If you liked it, let me know with a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, that's perfectly fine. Let me know with a thumbs down. If you have any questions at all, please let me know in the comments. And if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.